Hey guys, this is Patrick Sessoms with Due South Outfitters. We'd like to highlight today a rig that we usually use on small streams in our area that's very effective that a lot of times I feel gets overlooked. Uh, that rig is the dry dropper rig. So I'd like to walk you through how we set these up in order to fish water, kind of like we've got behind us here. To set up a dry dropper rig, I'm usually going to start out with just a 9 foot 5x liter um, tapered liter. Now I'm going to use a piece of 5x nylon tippet. This is Rio Power Flex, probably about 18 inches or so, and attach that to the end of my leader here. I'm going to use a double surgeon's knot to attach this, moisten the knot cinch down and I'm going to trim my tag ends. What I'm doing here guys, I'm just putting a piece of tippet on kind of to protect my leader if you will. That way if we bust the fly off or we change flies, I've got a little more room and I can just change my tippet instead of having to change a leader. Keeps my leader from getting chopped down to a thick section quite so fast. So I've now got 9 foot 5x leader about 12 inches of tippet on the end, 5X. I'm now going to attach a fly that I really like to use, an X caddis in a size 16 to the end of my leader here. And I'm going to attach this with the improved clinch knot. Very simple. I'll now moisten my knot, cinch it down, and trim my tag end. So now I have leader, tippet, dry fly. Now, to add the dropper portion of this rig, I'm gonna take a piece of tippet. This time I'm gonna use fluorocarbon because it will help my line to sink. Rio Fluoroflex Plus and 6X. And I like to use, we'll say, one arm length here to begin with. Now, the fun part. <laughs> We're gonna use our pointer finger here and I'm going to tie an improved clinch knot basically around that pointer finger. And what I'm left with is basically a little loop with a, an improved clinch knot at the end. And that loop I'm going to slip onto the bend of my dry fly going to moisten and cinch down. So I have eye of my dry fly connected to my tippet, which is connected to my leader. Bend of my dry fly connected to a piece of fluorocarbon tippet that will then be attached to my dropper fly. I just trim the tag off of my dropper. Now I'm going to attach my dropper nymph or our subsurface fly in this rig with the very simple improved clinch knot once again. I'll moisten and cinch. Now I'll trim my tag end. My finished product will look a little like this. Dry fly up top, 18 to 24 inches of 6X fluorocarbon, then nymph on the bottom. So I'd like to take a second and talk about why we like fishing this rig so much. One is it's very simple to tie. We've used two knots, the double surgeons to attach our tippet to our leader. And then from there down, literally it's just three improved clinch knots. Super simple. But the beauty of this rig is it lands really soft on the water. So if we're fishing water kind of like behind us where you might have really clear, slower moving water in an area that like a tail out, or even really calm sections of river, we find that this dry dropper rig doesn't spook fish quite as much as a nymph rig with a large strike indicator. So if you're fishing for spooky fish, um, it's a really good way to fish. One thing I wanted to add about the dry dropper rig is this dry fly truly acts as your strike indicator. 
So we're going to watch this dry fly to go under the water. If it goes under, you've had a strike on your nymph. Now, it also acts as a dry, so if you've had a fish come up and eat your dry fly, you'll see them eat the dry and it'll go underwater. But really good way to fish a spooky fish, not scare the fish, but also have great result in return. Another thing is we're able to cover a couple different spectrums of bug life here. So in a dry dropper rig, we ultimately cover the nymphal or subsurface or juvenile phase of a fly in the fly's life cycle because we have a subsurface fly that'll be down below the water. And then we'll also cover the adult phase of a, a fly's life because we'll have a fly floating on top of the water. As an angler, that's really advantageous because you have a chance of catching a fly both on the dry or on the nymph. So say you're fishing and you're just prospecting water, you're not completely sure as to what's going on, whether they're eating dries or nymphs. It's a really good way to kind of test the waters, if you will, and determine, hey, these fish are dialing in on, you know, uh, adult caddises, or they're actually eating uh, caddis pupa. Um, so it's a, it's a really good way to kind of test your water and figure out what type of fly those fish are feeding on that day. So once again, this is a simple dry dropper rig. Um, we use it all the time here in the southeast. It really shines on spooky fish, small streams, wild trout that are eating dry flies. Um, really kind of all around, it's a great rig. A couple of shortfalls of this rig, it doesn't hold a lot of weight very well. So if you've got a really heavy bottom fly or nymph, you probably don't use a dry fly as your strike indicator or as the rig. Instead, you'll want to use an actual strike indicator to carry that extra weight there. Another thing, a lot of times, this does not work well with split shot. The split shot will kind of hinge and it'll turn into a tangled mess. So if you're fishing a dry dropper and you want your dropper to get down a little bit, what I would recommend doing is using a bead-headed fly that's got a tungsten bead on the top. That tungsten bead is going to sink a lot faster than a brass bead because it is more dense and heavier. So, um, you know, a good way to kind of get your flies down faster without pulling down the dry fly would be to use uh, a tungsten beaded fly or nymph on, as your dropper. I think that kind of covers everything. Um, hopefully that's helped you guys out. We appreciate you tuning in to The Educated Angler and look forward to having more videos for you next time. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to let us know. And like anything in fly fishing, there's a ton of ways to do things. We're always open ears for new, new types of rigs, etc. So please, if you have any suggestions, let us know. But hopefully this helps you guys. You know, it's a very basic way to get into the sport, to learn to fish a dry dropper. But uh, nonetheless, we're here to help you guys. If you'd like for us to highlight anything in particular in future videos, please let us know. Until next time, tight lines. <music>